folks. This video is about um, how to install your new rear ATV conversion hub for your TW200. Um, you'll get one of these in the mail. Could be painted a different color. Who knows? Um, but physically, it'd be the exact same as this. Um, well, the same as this one. Uh, no bearings, you will need to buy bearings, you will need uh, lug bolts, four of them, they are M14 by one and a half, don't go any bigger than one and a half, so you need somewhere between a one and a one and a half, but anywhere in that range of work. You will need a new set of bearings, which I already installed in this one. There's three bearings. One bearing goes in the brake side, drum side. Two bearings go in the sprocket side. Uh, one thing to take note when you install your bearings, make sure when you install them in the sprocket side that that bearing is recessed slightly, about a quarter inch or so, because your seal is going to go in there. Um, Else should be stock. Um, I will say I noticed I had to buy new bearings. I bought them on Amazon. They were the this Boss bearings. Uh, the right bearings came in the kit. The wrong seals came in the kit. Uh, the seal is too big compared to the old seal. There is a difference. So the new seals won't fit inside of your oops, inside of your hub. They won't pop in there and actually seal up. So you might have to buy the uh, the proper kit from where they have it, All Balls Racing or there's TW parts list. I forget what company makes it. There's a few places that'll sell you the right parts. But don't buy that one. Um, you only need a few basic tools. A crescent wrench. Decent socket. You need a 17 millimeter socket. A 19 millimeter. 14 millimeter. It also helps if you have some 14 millimeter wrenches and a 12 millimeter wrench. Also, need a hammer. Huh. What? Oh, now we're good. Now we're good. With their YouTube videos. Okay, still here. All right. You need a hammer. Just because you need a hammer, and if you need another one, get, get a bigger hammer because. All else fails, you need a bigger hammer. If that don't work, I'd get a bigger one. So we'll go hold on. Bigger hammer. Okay. Right. Now that you've got all your tools, you can slowly assemble things. You do need to pre-notch your ring. It needs to look something in this effect, clover leaf pattern, because your new hub wouldn't fit the normal So you're going to need to notch it so that this can slide through. On another note, uh, this rim does have a left and a right, even though it is a zero offset does go directional so the valve stem if it's you get the same rim and this go on the sprocket side take note of that if you have a directional tire because you might install it backwards okay so first thing you can do is actually install your drum your brake So that's where you need your 12 millimeter. There's 
three nuts that hold that on there. Get them all started before you tighten them. Because you have to pull them back just a hair to get them started on there. like that and then you're going to put your lug nuts in. They go on this side. So just line them up like so. Factory should be uh, 14 millimeter bolts. If I remember right, mine had some washer thing on there. I don't know what it was for, but it was all broken in pieces, so I just took it off. It's probably to help the line up. Got that all installed. Now your tire is ready to go on. While you do have your brakes off, inspect your brake pads. Make sure you're not going to need new ones. Most of the time they're fine. Uh, really, most people don't use it all that often. So, brake just slides on. When it goes to slide on to your swing arm, make sure this is lined up straight forward and it slides on to this little catch piece here. And then that's all that goes on this side. On the far side, over there, is where this piece. Your seal and this piece ultimately go right here. Slide into that. If you use that seal, it will kind of hold that in there when you're putting the whole thing together. If it is this tight, odds are what you need to do is press that bearing in a little more. Which is what I'm going to do. We'll take a break for a second. 
All right, folks, back. So this seal should sit fairly flush in there, which now it is. Little piece there. Break back on that side. Let's give her a shot again. And it should go in square. This piece, your seal should be there on the other side. Oh, your brake drum should be on there. That piece slid in. Your brake lever is going to go back on through there. This little piece goes through here. Back just to here to get that back in. Oh, turn in there. wing nut to lock it on there. You will need to ride your bike and readjust that to where it's working again. Yeah. Now that you have that on there squared up, push her forward, put your chain back on the other side. about that later. Then your shaft here to go through the center. Uh, I would recommend putting some anti-seize on there which is going to keep it from turning into a nightmare to ever take off again. She just slides through. Don't forget your adjuster. You'll probably have to completely readjust that once you do this conversion anyways, because your tire is going to be a little different. Well, get that through. On the other side, same way. And then you can find your castle nut, wherever it went to. It's in front of what? Hiding back here. Uh, I believe there's two kinds of nuts. There is a self-locking one, or there's this castle nut that takes cotter pins. Um, you will need to square your tire, which you can start by adjusting this to the even numbers. You are going to want to leave some slack in your chain according to whatever it is. I forget what the The exact measurement is we measure it somewhere in the middle, play up and down. Um, and then basically your tire is installed at this point. You just need to tighten up this rear nut and set your chain adjustment. And then you should in your rear hub you'll have a brand new so. Nice converted ATV tubeless four-wheeler tire on your bike.